First off, let me apologize for my voice. Not that I think it's hoarse or anything messed up with my, my throat or there's anything messed up with the audio. I just think my voice is awful. You know, when I'm making these videos, I have to edit them some and I, I hear myself and I just think, how do people put up with me? So I hope you can look past how I'm sounding right now and hear what I'm saying exactly, okay? Um, I, I really miss you guys. I wish we could be together right now. I wish I wasn't looking... Um, I wish I wasn't in my office, I wish I was in the upper room, and I wish I wasn't looking at my phone, and I wish I was looking at uh, a room full of, of God's people right now. But, uh, you know, in, instead of wishing things were this way and, and wishing things were that way, let's, uh, let's make a decision right now to just feel blessed. Blessed that we living a, live in a day and age where we can do this, where we can record a video, we can get on Zoom, we can do stuff like that to where, you know, 20 years ago if this quarantine would have happened, this would have been a lot tougher. So instead of wishing it and missing for the next few moments, let's feel blessed that we can at least do this. I miss you guys. Um, let's say a quick prayer and we'll get into our lesson. Dear God, we thank you for being our Father. We thank you for taking care of us, Lord, during this time. We know that as the world is, is shooken up right now, Lord, that we stand firm with you and that there's nothing cha changing in our relationship with you and there's nothing changing in Lord, who you are and your might, your power, your ability. And so we rest in that. We anchor our faith in that. Lord, I ask you to, to help us be lights in this in this dark time to the people in our in our family and our friends and people we go to school with, we work with, Lord. Lord, help us be lights to them and let, let us share our faith with them in times like this. Again, we thank you for being our Father and, and how you take care of us. We pray all this in your Son's name. Amen. So when I watch a movie, read a book, or any type of story, I always love the character of a gentle character of a, a gentle giant, someone who's big and you know kind of a brute and, and strong and huge, towering, commanding presence, but also is very gentle and very humble and maybe kind of sensitive, and uh, you know he's, he has kind of, they kind of have adorable qualities. You know I think about Chewbacca from the Star Wars series where he's this huge kind of almost monster beast when you first see him. But then, around, you know, around the right type of people, he's he's like a cuddly teddy bear. Or a Groot in Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, in one scene, he's ripping people apart. And the next scene, you know, he wants to brighten someone's day, so he presents to them a flower from his hand. And I love that kind of, that, that connection between the two. One of my favorites, perhaps my favorite of all time, is Hagrid from the Harry Potter series. You know, he's this huge, you know, half-man, half-giant type character um, he towers above everybody in his life, besides his love interest in the Goblet of Fire, which is kind of funny. But uh, he loves animals, and not just like dogs and cats, but these, you know, maybe these rejected and despised animals that are deadly. And he takes care of them like he's like, you know, like a puppy, or like they're a puppy or something like that. But, you know, another way he's awesome is that he's really compassionate and kind to Harry. When he first meets him, he gives that one of, you know, to me, one of my favorite lines of the whole series when he says, you're a wizard, Harry. You know, and in that one moment, he kind of gives this, you know, for the first time in Harry's life, like, I, I mean something, you know? And so I love this kind of juxta juxtaposition of big and mighty, but soft and gentle. And I love that. And this, in this character trait, this gentleness that all these characters have in, in common, this, you know, Chewbacca and Groot and and Hagrid, maybe you can think of some others. Something they all have in giant in, in their title of a gentle giant. Something they have in common is that ca that characteristic characteristic, excuse me, of gentleness. You know, when we go back to our, our bare fruit study from Galatians five twenty two through twenty three. One of the last ones we get to is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. This month, as we continue our study, we land in maybe one of the most misunderstood fruits of them all. This topic, this idea of gentleness and how, how God displays that in his character and how we are commanded to be gentle. And so what does that mean? What, what does that kind of guide us to? And what, or where are we getting to when we ask the question, what is gentleness? Gentleness is defined as being kind, tender, or mild manner, softness of action. The Greek word used in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, 22 through 23, carries with it this idea to, to not cause harm, to be gentle with someone's actions. The fruit of, of gentleness isn't about being wishy-washy or indecisive, unassertive, or just plain wimpy. 
Instead, it's a refusal to use power, or to use the, the ability to do something to harm anyone. An unwillingness to cut and slash people down. Wounding them for vengeance, spite, or control. It's in this distinction between power and control that people, I think, misunderstand the fruit of gentleness. Gentleness is not the absence of power, but it's the ability to control it to the right measure. You know, I think about rain. Um, a farmer prays for rain, you know, for his crops. Or a farmer, someone who's in the agricultural business, prays for good rain to come so they can their crops can grow and be healthy and stuff like that. Now, water is one of the most powerful um, elements in this whole world. You know, it shapes mountains. It forms the world, you know, by its, by its power. But when a, when a farmer prays for rain, he's not praying for a torrential downpour because that's going to drown his crops. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 2, God is... Is, is comparing his word to a rain. I'll read 32, Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 2. May my teaching drop as the rain. May my speech distill as the dew, like gentle rain upon the tender grass, and like showers upon the herb. Water's powerful, but a gentle rain is perfect because it's exactly what we need and what a farmer needs for growth. You could also think about, a, you know, a sailor out at sea uh, trying to sail, you know, someone, a captain of a boat or ship that, is, you know, is being propelled forward by the wind. When he prays for rain, uh, pray, prays for wind, excuse me, he's not asking for this violent gust of wind because that could capsize his boat. But instead of that, a gentle breeze, a, a, a gentle wind can come through and move that boat to its direction. You know, there's a difference in, in Acts chapter 27, verse 13, where a soft, gentle breeze comes in and moves the ship forward to where in five verses later, a violent gust of wind comes in and almost capsizes the ship. And so there's a difference. Neither of these examples has, is the absence of power. When rain comes down, that's the power of water working. When a, when a, wind, when a, a, a gust of wind comes through, that's still the power of wind working. It's not the absence of it, but it's the control of it to the exact right measure needed for movement or for growth or whatever the beneficial need is at that moment. Gentleness in our spirit is the same way. Being gentle is not just being timid and without power. Being gentle is controlling who we are. It's, you know, it goes right along with the last fruit of the spirit, self-control, to where we are restraining our thoughts, our actions, our, our reactions to the right measure. You know, we can't go much more into this topic of gentleness without going to God. Because just as the other eight fruits of the Spirit, God is the perfect embodiment, and He perfectly exemplifies what gentleness is. So if you have your Bibles, open up to Isaiah chapter 40. We're going to be looking through verses 10 through 12 as we kind of try to describe God, the gentle giant. Look at how Isaiah describes God in verses 10 through 12. Let's skip 11 for right now. Behold, the Lord God will come with might, with his arm ruling for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and marked off the heavens by the span, and calculated the dust of the earth by measure, and weighed the mountains in a balance, and the hills in a pair of scales? When Isaiah is describing God here in verse 10 through 12, it's his relationship to the world and the universe as we see it. He's able to do these amazing feats like weigh the waters of the earth, calculate the dust of the earth, of the world. These feats that we our minds can't even comprehend, they're so big and so mighty. But look at verse 11. 10, 10, and verse 12, verse 10 and verse 12 is how God is compared to his relationship to the world. Verse 11 is something different. Like a shepherd, he will tend his flock. In his arm he will gather the lambs and carry them in his bosom. He will gently lead the nursing lambs. God is described as this all-powerful, giant being when it comes to his creation. But when it comes to his people, he's this gentle, loving shepherd that's going to pick us up and give us out everything we need and take care of our, our, our desires and takes care of of our our wounds and he and he will heal us. God is a gentle giant. He's giant in every way, but when he comes to us, he's still far and be far and beyond 
our size, but he's gentle with us. Flip over to 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 11 through 13. In this description, God is, is revealing himself to Elijah. And God could have revealed himself in any way possible. He could have revealed himself in fire. He could have revealed himself in an earthquake. He could have revealed himself in any mindful, powerful way because that would have been a right image of who he is. But that's not how he decides to, to show himself to Elijah in this time. It says a gentle breeze came by. And so at that moment, Elijah comes out of the cave because he recognizes that this is God. That's how God relates to his people, people in a gentle, humble way. Read one more verse. Psalm chapter 103, verses 10 through 11. He's gentle in his relationship to us. He's gentle in how he reveals to us. But he's also gentle in his judgment to us. Psalms 103, 10 through 12. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities, nor as high as the for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness to those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, as far as he removed our transgressions from us, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he himself knows our frame. He is mindful that we are dust. That we are just dust. God is a gentle giant of a being before us. He's the creator. He's the almighty. He's the alpha and omega. He's also our, our gentle shepherd. He's also our father. He's also a gentle judge. And, and the reason he's able to be a gentle judge is because of what he did. And that's the story of salvation. He's able to be gentle in his judgment because of who he sent to us, the gentle servant, Jesus Christ. I believe we can call Jesus the gentle servant because of three different reasons. First off, it's because he yielded to man's weaknesses. You know, as Jesus is walking into his last Passover, the one he knows in which at the end of it he will be crucified, he has this large debate you can find this at the end of the Gospels. You ha he, finds this he has this large debate between the Pharisees and the Sadducees and himself. And even though he, he's strict and he's strong in his responses, compared to how wrong they were and how right he was, <clears throat> he was gentle in how he handled everything that went down in his last days. I believe he's, he can be called a gentle servant because he provided rest and restoration to those in need. I think about Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 29, where he says, Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and lean, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Christ has a gentle spirit because he, he's willing to yield to the weaknesses of man at times while he walked, around, walked among man on this earth. I believe gent Christ is, has a gentle spirit because his whole desire to be on the earth was to come to seek and to save the lost. He came looking for those in need. He came to give what we needed, salvation. And then lastly, I think Christ can be called the gentle servant because he submitted to God's will. And we have that, that almost tough passages to read towards the end of his life, where he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, I think of Mark chapter 14. And he says he was grieved to the point of death. And even then, he was willing to submit to his Father's will. He was gentle in his responsibility. He knew what it was going to take, and he was willing to go there. And when he was going through the next 24 hours from that moment from Gethsemane to where he's on the cross, he yielded to, to what God wanted for him, what God desired out of, his, uh, out of his life and out of his death. And he did it for me. I think in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 22 through 24, it said, where Peter writes, It was he who committed no sin, nor any deceit was found in his mouth. And while being reviled, he didn't revile back in return. While we're suffering, he uttered no threats, but kept entrusting himself to him who judges righteously. 
And he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sin and live in righteousness, for by his wounds you were healed. Christ, I think, is deserving of this title, the gentle servant, because of the willingness he had to go to the extremes that he went to, to yield to man's weaknesses at times, to give to give rest to those in need, and then ultimately, more than anything else, to submit to God's will. He had a gentle and humble spirit. Even though he was deserving a triumphant entry into Jerusalem as the king of kings, he rode in on a donkey, and he felt at home in that because he's a gentle servant. Christ showed gentleness in spirit, in action, in, in every way possible. He, like his Father, is motivated to be gentle in spirit in his relationship to us out of this great, immense love that he has, that they have for us. You know, in conclusion, what peace can you take away from this? The fact that the God of all the universe, the creator, the one that we long to draw near to at the end of our lives, the one that we can have a relationship right now, right now with, what benefit does it bring you to know that he is, he is gentle, God, the Spirit, the Son, that God is gentle in his spirit and in his nature? What can we take away from that today? I hope you'll join back in with us next week as we, as we look not, as we kind of continue in on this study how God is gentle, gentle to us. And if that's the case, and it is, how can we be gentle to other people? Like I said in the beginning, guys, I miss you guys, and I wish I wasn't doing this awful recording on a phone where I've, I've taken about a thousand takes, and this is as best as I can do. I, I wish I was, I was standing in front of you guys in the upper room right now, but that time will come, and we're blessed to have this opportunity. I love you guys, and I miss you guys. Let's say a quick prayer, and this will be it. Dear God, we thank you for your gentle spirit and how that you deal with us, Lord, not as we deserve to be dealt with, but gently. Lord, I ask you to, to bless us, to guide us, and to guard us as we navigate this difficult time. Lord, let us be gentle in our response to how life is right now. Lord, let us be gentle to our family and our friends as we all navigate this together. We thank you for being our Father. Pray this in your Son's name. Amen. See you guys.